Hi. What's up? You're the first guest we've had with the new carpet. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Good for a radio Great. show, hey, mm. to talk about the carpet right Fantastic. off the bat. Fantastic. Yeah, yes, let's talk about it. <laughs> that's, that's what they say. That's what they say good content is. My life is a carpet. I think to think so, too. Yeah. What, when you first started out like 20 years ago, 20 odd years ago, what what career did you have in mind? I didn't know. I mean, I didn't I didn't have any um I didn't guess that I was going to make it to be honest. Yeah. I didn't I just was like kind of doing my thing just trying to <clears throat> figure out what you know, grew up in a, a a family that values academics, you know, over everything else and being a doctor or a lawyer was like, you know, the version of success that I was fed. Yeah. And so um, I think I, I couldn't wrap my head around anything else. You know, I remember my dad, um, said something about, you know, not, you could, can't make an, a career out of being an entertainer for the most part. Yeah. And, um, that's really stuck with me. Like, it was like something that I was always like, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> is, it, is it kind of fueled you? Um, no, it just kind of made me think. Yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you know, you got to be careful what you say to kids. You know, that's... Um, I, I, but I think you I just... He's kind of right, is what you think. It's, he, well, it's challenging. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah. I mean, no, I, yeah, I, I guess I thought maybe he's right. And I, you know, I didn't really know. I just, honestly, I just didn't want to be told what to do, to be honest with you, by him or kind of anyone else. I get it. Um, but especially him, because... Um, I didn't think he seemed that happy, you know. So it, his version of life did not seem so successful to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know what was successful, you know. Um, I don't think I, 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 I didn't really trust anyone's view of success, to be honest. When you were writing songs for, like, I mentioned the Rihanna song and, and the Cher song, but, like, you know, when you look through all the songs you've written, all the placements you've had, there's, there's an awful lot of them. Is it challenging to do that and try to get your own music out at the same time? Or even write for uh, yourself, well, too? Well, I mean, you have to know how it happened. I mean, I, I got my first major label de deal in 2006. Yeah. And um, I was introduced to a lot of big songwriters, you know. Um, it was uh, Island Def Jam and... You know, I, I was being, you know, fed the idea that I could, you know, would be a big pop star or whatever, you know. I didn't know what was in store or whatever, but I was moving all around um, with different songwriters, writing with them for my record. Well, what I really loved was that um, I got all this, you know, I got to write with these people who were successful songwriters and and absorb their whatever you know their essence and so um at the end of and then you know i i i got a deal um with an indie through a major through sony so it was like like three years basically banging around in the major label system and i wrote uh, like in the area of like 130 140 songs mm -hmm. you know it was just like a lot and and like, what i learned about myself then is that i had the you know i could be prolific like i I could go in a room and just like cry on command and kind of do this kind of stuff. So, um, so I did, and and then at the end of it, but they were pushing me in all different directions. I, you know, I didn't have a strong management at the time, I, so I was a bit rudderless, and and um, and I was like, and they were like, oh, let's go in this rock direction, let's go in this pop direction, yeah, let's go yeah. in this folk direction. So I just, but, um, you know, it was frustrating at the time but also just you know convoluted I didn't know where I was going I just was like following what they said because I didn't know any better you know yeah and and honestly even when you know better it's very difficult not to like to navigate the system yeah, the major label system yeah. so um after the three years then nothing um the um it bore no fruit like there was not a, an actual record that came out um but I had all these songs and one song called love will keep you up all night was cut by the backstreet boys mm -hmm. And um, and that was like a watershed moment for me where I, I felt like, oh, that can happen. <laughs> That's interesting. Is it like a validation? Uh, yes, especially since like, you know, coming up as an indie artist, one of, the, one of the walls that I always hit was that like, yo, you don't have the songs to get through. You don't yeah. have the songs. You don't have the songs. So then when I became a songwriter, the irony was, you know, not lost on me at all. I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> turns, out I, turns out I have the songs for everybody else. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like never getting a date and then being a porn star. You're like, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so <laughs> I, um, I think I, you know, I just, 
that, uh, I, you know, I also, to me, making even a living at music was kind of like, oh my God, you know, like, and, and you know, getting getting deals was like, you know, becoming my thing, you know, and, and like, and living off those deals. So, you know, um, at the end of the three-year period of the major labels, I got a publishing deal uh, with Primary Wave that's now um, absorbed by BMG. But they gave me another deal for songwriting, um, kind of based off like the the music I had and the fact that I got this cut with the Backstreet Boys, and and then I became a songwriter, and um, and I you know I kind of stayed in California, kept like using those contacts and more to songwrite, and I I, I just instinctively knew that I needed to um, write as many songs as possible and as many genres as possible in order to like make a living, especially in light of the fact that streaming was yeah. in its infancy. Did you still want to perform? Did you? Was that still on the... No. I was, no. In, I was in survival mode at that point. Right. I was like, who's going to get... I'd had two indie deals before that. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to get another deal? Mm-hmm. Doubtful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I was like, two indie deals, two major label deals, no, you know, forward movement as far as, you know, getting known as an artist. So I was like, you know, I'll be a songwriter. Screw it. This way I don't have to worry about, you know, I could become Job of the Hut. Nobody cares. You know, it's just like the the image is not important. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know? you can wear sweats all day, everything. You're like, kind of like being, I don't really do like being a radio host. I know hey, what you mean. Exactly. Uh, so you look like crap, by I, the way. I, I really do. I got to tell you. I, I didn't help that I wore four I toques at the I same keyed. time. And my Star Wars pajamas today didn't help. There's a hole in both shoulders. I wish you had Star Wars pajamas. I though. wish I owned Star Wars pajamas. Mm, right. So what's the turning point? Would you ever get laid? Uh, I don't think so. Probably not. No. Or by weird people yeah when do you uh when does it all change like when does when does it happen is there a turning oh, point? oh god well yes i think you know in when i when i became a songwriter when i bought a ukulele because i was just like you know fun it was like you know the musical version of star wars pajamas for me and yeah. i just like took off and i loved it and i learned all these songs and i love that by the way yeah. i love that you write on ukulele yeah i mean you know you know who write, wrote on ukulele that i was like that i found out way after that i thought was cool was sam cook yeah which i was like oh wow that's really cool well, you, you kind of i mean i don't want to say you have to go with gut but I, f- I feel like you can't it's just an informal instrument yeah you know it's like kind you can't of overthink like it maybe yeah and you you kind of like lull the uh you know the forest animals out of the the log you know <laughs> <laughs> they're like oh look oh you know like they're not scared like that's my thoughts they come out of the log mm. when i'm like playing ukulele as opposed to like unlocking the guitar which is like i feel like they all run back inside yeah when you uh, whip that out at a session you know it's like because mm. then everyone's like oh so we're gonna write on guitar mm. ukulele it's just like it's kind of like you know the uh you know i don't know it's like a hawaiian shirt or something like that right. you're just like kind of amused by it but it could be a fashion statement so you so you write on ukulele you 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 write a song that become, that kind of turns things around for you i write into the wild and mm-hmm. um and uh, a few other songs that are just like um you know forever for now and in tokyo and like it just became it just opened the door in my heart back to the love of music after i'd been through kind of you know, what people would consider the ringer. I didn't think of it as the ringer at the time. It was just my life, you know? Mm-hmm. It was just like, hey, you have a really good voice. You want to sign you? Let's write a bunch of songs and mm-hmm. then never get an album out. Right. <laughs> so I just like, but I was just enjoying myself again. And I, I remember, distinctly remember when I was a writer and I was starting, people starting to spiral or like starting to like come around me mm-hmm. again as an artist. Mm-hmm. It was because I was having so much fun just being a writer and and playing ukulele and writing songs. Well, well let me ask you this then. You know, a, a good friend of mine, Jim Cuddy, he's in this band called Blue Rodeo. I don't know if you know them, but they're like a very big Canadian band. Like, mm. you know, a big, I'm not familiar. I'm so sorry. he he, uh, he he they didn't really become super successful till he was around 30, 31. Mm-hmm. And he said he was incredibly grateful because had he gotten successful when he was seventeen, right? Gonna... Right, right, yeah, he would have had a really yeah. hard time with it. Do you feel like that? Like when you're able to do the rooms you want to do now, when you're able to play the shows? Oh yeah, the appreciation factor. It, it's so nice to be able to appreciate and enjoy things in real time. Because you know, I wrote with a lot of artists. I wrote with um, so many artists that were like so young, and by the time um, it even or not even that young, you know, um, for everything from like you know eighteen to thirty, and just by the time they were appreciative of it or were like oh wow that was pretty cool it was done it was done it was over <laughs> yeah you know and it's like um you because you get so um uh they either think it's gonna you either think it's gonna last forever or you don't you know or you listen to all these people you know like i had the like set spike 
happened several times. You know, it's like, you're amazing. You're fantastic. You're going to be huge. I, why we don't even know how big you're going to be? It's, it could, you could be huge indie or actually huge, huge. Oh, yeah, right. And then it's just like, or you could be sitting in your living room with nothing. Star Wars pajamas. You know, yeah, with Star yeah. Wars pajamas <laughs> and a bar shift that starts at five. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. I don't, it's not a very easy um you know, headspace to mm. navigate. And mm. I think when you do get it, when you're like more mature or, or not even, I think it's more like your experience. I think everything that matters to me in this business is um, one of the biggest things is my perspective. That's something I wouldn't trade for the world. You know, like if they said like, you know, you couldn't go back 10 years or you can go, uh, you could erase your memory and just be the biggest star what in the world. What you were promised to be, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, it, it's really about like, you know, the music and the bass. Like my, you know, like having having um, a foundation is like really important, you know, and it feels really good and, and just like, I don't know, right. Can you take me through the, we're going to end on a song here. We're going to go on the title track from Dreamcatcher. Can you just take me through Dreamcatcher? Um, well, Dreamcatcher is a few years old. I, I was, you know, um, going through my last breakup and uh it was i remember it was that it came out of that moment you know when when you're formulating in your subconscious or like just that that edge of the subconscious leading to this conscious of like that this is over <laughs> you're breaking up and it's like a very uh lonely kind of yeah. um uh, kind of faltering around in the dark kind of place and and that that song that's like I feel like it just was a poem that like fell out and I was trying to play um this guitar that was broken and out of tune in this studio it was <laughs> pretty apropos of that <laughs> that moment and then uh I just did it with this guy Chris Loco in England and we just like um he started playing the guitar like on piano and uh yeah and that song just fell out and it's uh, this album there's like three songs that were around for a while that um and that's the thing that's cool. That's why I also enjoy just writing constantly because you just never know where a song's going to land. Like I tell people that when I had Lost on You, by the time Lost on You was like killing it mm -hmm. um, overseas, I was already like 30 or 40 songs away. Right. I'd already written 30 or 40 more songs. And because people, you know, I get this like thing in, in, you know, name the country and they'll be like, so you must have known. That Lost on You was going to be a huge... Oh. I was like, I actually got dropped from Warner Brothers after I played it for them. That's how... No, no, no albums work that way. No, yeah. I mean, these things... That's the funny thing when people come in to promote their records. They're always a few... Uh, uh, they're, they're always about two years removed from the pressing questions I have about the songs they just wrote. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's so nice to meet you, by the way. You too.